A great man named Robert Jordan once said that time is like a wheel. All that is old will become new again. Just like frosted tips are coming back, so is the Warhammer Old World. And in that spirit, we're headed back to one of its best settings, the City of the Damned, Mordheim. Hey guys, and welcome back to Eric's Hobby Workshop. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build this awesome set of medieval row houses. Detailed fully inside and out, and accessible for your hands to put all your miniatures in there to have a vicious skirmish in the ruined city of the damned. Let's get to it! Camera's too far away today, guys. Let's get to it! Ugh. Alright guys, we'll start this build from the bottom up, starting with the base, which I trace out on a piece of chipboard, just kind of eyeballing it. Now I'd run out of chipboard, but chipboard can also be found in the back of drawing pads and legal pads, so I used one of those, and it worked just fine. This is one of my favorite materials, it's versatile, it's cheap, it's got a low clearance to the ground. Shout out to Wylock from Wylock's Armory for introducing me. Next I used some sculptor's mesh. This is a larger gauge than I normally use, but this stuff's going to look great as diamond planed windows. So I used some matchsticks, and I cut them into a little window frame that I then glued down with some white glue to make a little diamond planed window. Now there is no glass in this, but that's fine, because it has the right look, and some of the glass might have been shattered by a shockwave from an explosion or something like that. Next I cut a small rectangle of foam core one inch by one and a half inches, and this is gonna be a door. So I cut some planks to adorn this door with out of coffee stir sticks. I apply a bit of white glue, slap my planks on there, and I get a nice plank door effect, very quick and easy. I add some cross braces to add some detail. I'm gonna make a couple different styles of doors because this is row houses. I'm gonna have three different doorways. Next I trim a piece of scrap foam, this is XPS insulation foam, and I cut it into tiny bricks. As you can see there's a lot of variation in the size of the bricks and it's not very precise. I'm just winging this and choosing the size of bricks that I want. The smaller they are, the more realistic they'll look, but that'll also make it more tedious so you want to make some compromises and make them a little bit bigger than you think. I load these into a container and add some sharp rocks that I've salvaged from outside and give those a nice shake. This little tumbler is gonna round out some of the edges, giving them a bit more of an organic and mottled appearance. And next I turn my glue gun to low. This is important. If you don't have a dual temp glue gun, then click the link below and get yourself one, because it's really awesome. And this will keep from melting the insulation foam. So I start gluing my bricks down, gluing them everywhere gluing them along the lines, using my doors as a guideway for my doorways. I add brick after brick after brick, just like a tiny little mason would. So you guys are probably saying, Eric, when you built that ruined tower, you made such a big deal about how tedious it is to do the bricks. And you know what? I'm a generally positive person. So I only remember the good things about builds. I just remember how cool it looked and how satisfying it was when it's done. And I blocked out all those negative memories of the tedium. And here I am again, laying brick after brick after brick. And you know what? I'd do it again. So as I'm bricking away here, to add a little bit of really cool detail, I'm gonna put a hearth in this building and a chimney. So I glue some stones together in a vertical arrangement and then using a mini to test to make sure it's about the correct mantle height, I glue that into place. And then I keep building the chimney around that when that's done. Looking pretty cool. I glue some of my pre-made windows in as I build. And this gives the windows a nice embedded look into the walls. Alternatively, you could build the walls and then cut in, but that's a little bit trickier to get a nice balanced look because you can end up with these strange slivers of stone if you do that. So I like to do it this way. Once I've reached a certain height, I'll add a lintel to the door. This one I'm going to do out of stone, but you could just as easily do a little piece of wood. 
I decided the middle house should have some timbers on the front. So here I'm doing that technique where I cut it out and add the timber after. You could easily have built the masonry around this timber, but this works as well to embed the timber right in there. I cut away some of the bricks I've already laid because I wanted to have a timber frame for the door in this middle house as well to differentiate it from the first house. I also add a different style of window because I'm really trying to sell the look that this is three different houses pressed together and not just one long structure. Looking pretty good. Once I've reached two inches in height, I add some cross beams. You can rest these right on top of the stone, or you can add some support columns that are exactly the right height you want out of wood, which is what I've done here. This wood is 3 16 of an inch balsa wood. I normally like to use base wood for this because it's a little bit sturdier, but balsa wood looks fine. I'm building a small staircase here so you can get to the second level. I'm using super glue because it sets faster, and these stairs are pretty finicky to work with if you need to use white glue. We'll just keep moving around. I make a lintel for the second door in with a little piece of balsa wood. And as you can see, it's given it a different facade than the first house, which I'm pretty pleased with. I break off the beams at certain angles to allow the first floor to be playable. If the whole floor was beamed as if the construction was new, then you'd never be able to get a miniature or your hand in there. I also glue in some beams on the side edge to make it jetty out on this side as well. Jettying is one of the things that really gives a distinctive medieval look to a building. Next I cut out some A-shaped pieces from some foam core and I sketch out where I think my ruined section will be and then I glue that on to my beams and to my structure. And this is the method I use to create the timbered upper structures. And it's very gratifying to see the shape coming together as I do it. A little bit of hot glue. Fix those on nice and quickly. Then using some more stir sticks, I can start to add in some floorboards and get a sense of what my floor is going to look like. Making some more windows as I go. You know, it would have been faster if I just mass produced these windows, but uh, I ended up just kind of making a lot of them as I went. That's part of my improvisational building process. So here I'm making a structure that will jetty out on the second floor of the middle house. And it's going to be a sort of bay window. And I'd really make it out of balsa wood and mesh and matchsticks, same way I've used to do everything else. But this piece I sort of pre-constructed before putting it on, and that makes life a lot easier, and adds some really cool medieval looking detail. Some of these balsa pieces are cut on an angle and able to make this structure work, and that's easily accomplished with a knife. That's one of the advantages balsa has over base wood, is you can just cut it with a craft knife or a hobby knife, and look at that looking awesome. If at any time during this video you think, wow, I really like this content and I wish Eric posted stuff like this more often, well then head down into the links below and check out my Patreon link. By supporting me on there, you can enable me to make these things more professional and more often, and I really appreciate it. We've also got all sorts of cool stuff on there, like work in progress photos, behind the scenes, Patreon only videos, and a Discord where we can chat about terrain ideas and inspiration. So check it out, and I hope to see you guys on there. Next I'm going to make some little shutters, just because I kind of felt like it. Uh, I start by cutting some little pieces of cardboard, and these are going to be the metal braces that sort of hold the shutters on. These tiny little scissors help to cut a nice little point on there. And then I'm just going to use some pieces of stir stick and glue those on there. 
Shutters are something that gives another little level of medieval detail. And I keep plugging away at that brickwork. I have to say, after doing this in real time, it's remarkably satisfying to see it go by at time-lapse speed. Next I use a sharp knife to cut a channel into the corner of my foam core structure and then add a balsa wood beam to give it that timber framed look, making sure to leave a couple millimeters of clearance so it sticks out away from the foam core. I add a few more bricks to get up to the floor level, and then I trim it with an X-Acto blade to make it nice and flat. I do this at several points, just cutting the bricks where necessary to make sure I get the right levels. I add some stir sticks to continue that timber frame look, going around the model and adding details where appropriate. Helps to look at reference photos for this and Pinterest is one of the best places for that. I also have a reference photo thread on the Discord on my Patreon, so check that out if you're interested. You can see my personal Pinterest pages on there. I cut a little hole in the foam core and I push some balsa wood in and this makes the floor beams for the internal floors. It also gives that realistic stud of the beam sticking out the front, which is an awesome detail. I frame the boundary of a window with some more coffee stir sticks, and then using a sharp X-Acto blade, I cut that window out. This is another way of doing windows, and it adds some visual variance from the toothpick or matchstick and mesh method. I figure some of the windows would have been fully knocked out. You can also add the details and the framing to the pieces before gluing them on, like I've done here. Add another beam of balsa wood to the roof line, and ones on the side as well. And then I use balsa for the hearth in the second building, just to give some differentiation from the style of hearth that I did in the first one. For the chimney, I just glue bricks to the wall all the way up to the top on the inside. A little bit of wiggle and irregularity actually looks great here, so I don't worry about that. For the part of the chimney that protrudes above the building, I use a solid piece of foam and I draw on the brick pattern with a ballpoint pen, then cut into it to make it nice and deep with a sharp bladed knife, and then I come back with the pen to make sure those grooves are nice and deep and defined. And I press some tin foil into it to get a little bit of a rougher pattern. And it looks like that. Pretty good. I keep detailing the structure with timbers here and there. Adding walls. Adding roof beams. just generally going around the structure, adding what I think it needs next as I go. This varied roof line is going to look awesome when it's done. I was feeling a little saucy, so on this side I went for a triple window. Nice. I was trying to figure out if I wanted this side to jetty out or how far, so I just kind of held it, wiggled it around. Keep bricking. You know, all in all, it's just another brick in the wall. After a little bit of practice, you learn to stick some out further than others. This gives a nice varied texture during the painting stage. To make the top of the archway here, I decided to go for a rounded door. So I made a little bit of an archway by gluing wedge-shaped bricks together. And then once the walls were high enough, I glued that in on top of the door frame to create a distinct look for the third house here. Looking pretty good. Gluing more beams in. And I added a little balcony on this side. 
with a little bit of a suggestion of a railing, but most of it I left open, so to make it easier for models to come in and out, or to put a little walkway on if you wanted. Same as before, I added some more structure, and I decided I'm going to leave a hole on the left here as you can see, and that'll allow some more access to the street. So I mix up some grey paint with a bit of a Mod Podge, and at this stage I paint all the stonework in a nice light grey colour. I haven't put in most of the floors yet, but it would be absolute murder to reach all these places before, so oh. And look at that, I shattered the staircase trying to pull it out. Well, that happens. Should have planned ahead. But as you can see, it's much easier to paint all the stonework when I can reach it at this stage than to do it later on. And with the grey going over that pink, it's really starting to come together. I make sure not to forget my little hearth and all the other removable pieces. Like this little chimney. I glue some more window frames into the upper floors here. I like this little corner window here. That's a great place for an archer to snipe from or something like that. adding framing bits as I go, but for this part I decided to cut away more of the wall and leave sort of a half ruined remnant of a window. This will provide some low cover and a little bit of a varied look. Nice. Next I dry brush all the grey parts with a lighter grey, almost white. This picks out some of that detail and adds some nice contrast. Then I start gluing in floorboards adding them to the places that I no longer need to reach, underneath. For this part here, I added a bunch of floorboards in the normal way, but I didn't really have the beam space to make that balcony accessible by floorboard. So what I did was I added some floorboards as if somebody had come along and put some planks to make a little makeshift bridge. This adds a little bit of character. I'm pretty pleased with how this worked out. Just laying those in there. I think it looks great. Next I add some more roof beams. These are going to create a place to mount my planks that will eventually hold the shingles. These broken off planks give a real ramshackle look. It really adds to the look of the whole thing when it comes together. They also look great from the back side. To make the shingles, I start by tracing out some lines on a piece of cardboard. This is just a cereal box or something. 1.5 centimeters apart, and then I cut those into strips. I then come through and I notch them cutting part way through about every 0.75 of a centimeter and I notch these long strips all the way along and then bend back each alternating shingle And from there, I trim every other shingle a little bit to vary the lengths. This creates this awesome looking shingle pattern. Cutting those into the desired lengths I need, and some occasional single ones, I add some ramshackle shingles to my roof. I want it to look pretty decrepit. It also helps that you don't need to make as many shingles as you might expect if you were doing a whole roof that didn't have huge gaping gaps in it. I'm applying these with hot glue, and if you get these pesky strings, just pull them away while you can, because they won't look good once they're painted if you leave too many on. It's inevitable that one or two will sneak its way through. 
Next, using some white glue and some of the extra bricks I had lying around, I'm going to make a pile of rubble in the corners here. I don't want to add too much because I want to make sure there are some nice level surfaces for my guys to stand on. I add some white glue to the corners of all the floors and I sprinkle in some sand. Next I paint over almost everything with a grayish brown color. This is burnt umber mixed with a little bit of the gray paint from before. Burnt umber itself is pretty red and I wanted something that looked a little bit more weathered. I think I even added a touch of green to this paint. But when this goes on, you can really start to see this as a medieval building rather than, you know, some stir sticks and foam. Very gratifying. Next I dry brush with some light grayish brown and I use a huge brush for this, which is very satisfying after all these tiny brush stuff that I was doing. And that starts to really pick out some of these details. Next I come in with an off-white and I paint in some of the panels here to give that nice timber frame look that is so classic of medieval Europe. For a lot of these squares, I just roughly come in with the big brush and then I come back with a fine brush to get the nice edges. It's worth taking your time here because redoing the stage is a pain if you get any of the white on the brown, but the results are great once you do it. So I decided to do this on the two end houses and leave the middle house brown to again reinforce the idea that it is a separate house. I also just really like the way it looked brown. For the interior walls, I use some of the same paint but watered down and I sort of make this frothy, sloppy coat of paint that when it dries, it has this horrible mottled texture that just looks like black mold and water damage and all kinds of stuff. And so this is one of those techniques that's, I think looks really good and is also extremely low effort, which is rare and I'm pretty happy about. Next I come in with a dirty black wash. This is just dark acrylic paint black acrylic paint and water and this really muddies everything up as well as adding some contrast to the corners which makes things look a little bit more crisp and hides a few of the mistakes and I kind of slap that on pretty much everywhere on this build next I'm going to use some incubi darkness to paint in the shingles you could paint them black that would look good too but uh, this adds just a little bit more color variation and it's quite a nice color. I like it a lot. This is a Games Workshop paint and uh, as I've said before, I don't usually like to use model paints for painting something this big, but I really like this color and I'm not gonna use much of it otherwise. I add a little bit of white, I dry brush to pick out the details and edges and we are done. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, comment, share. I already said share. 
hit that notification bell and head down in the links below to check out my Patreon link if you want to support me on there or the Amazon affiliate links are another cool way to support the channel where you can buy the stuff you already need and I get a little kickback and everybody's happy. We'll see you next time on Eric's Hobby Workshop.